Welcome to our webinar today and thank you for attending. Uh, my name is Sue and I work at Madrid as a product manager. This is Dr. Ahmad's second time participating in our webinar. The topic of his presentation today is clinical tips and tricks to ensure perfect scans, especially focusing on crown and bridge works. This is so exciting for me. Here, Dr. Ahmad, uh, how have you been? How are you doing, Sue? Um, and thanks again for welcoming me on the webinar. I've been very well, um, still recovering a bit from IDS, which was a very, very busy period, but uh, back in the clinic now and feeling good. That's nice. So actually, um, before going over the webinar, I would like to remind you that this webinar will be recorded and it, uh, we will make it available on our YouTube channel, Medit Academy, shortly after the webinar is done. And after the presentation, Dr. Ahmad and uh, we will have a Q&A session and we have already received questions in advance via email. So Dr. Ahmad will uh, answer those burning questions following his presentation. However, uh, if we are unable to answer all your questions today, the replies will be sent to your email address as soon as possible. You may also contact Medit.edu, Medit.edu at Medit.com with any questions you may have. Um, okay, I'll turn off my camera now and then uh, so that he can start it. All right, guys, so a big welcome for everyone who is joining us, either in the um, recording or on YouTube. Um, so as Sue said, my name is Dr. Ahmed Al Hassani. Uh, I'm a general dentist in New Zealand, and today's topic is clinical tips and tricks to ensure perfect scans. So as Sue mentioned, this is my second webinar for Medit, and it's a big honor to be here with you. Uh, the first webinar, I focused on the same-day dentistry workflow. And today, really, I want to focus on scanning and what I do in my practice, which I'm here at at the moment, uh, day to day to ensure perfect scans. So a little bit about me. I won't spend too much time on this because those of you who watched webinar number one will know a little bit about myself. Um, but basically, I'm a general dentist. I'm a, still a full time private practitioner. And I uh, work alongside my father and my brother. So we own and operate over 30 dental chairs in Wellington, New Zealand. We have quite a big kind of family business. And as I mentioned, uh, I'm still a full-time private practitioner. I, I'm on the tools every single day. And uh, yeah, it's just been a blast seeing how much the industry and dentistry has changed in the past seven years. So we were early adopters of CAD CAM in our practice. This is the picture of our lab. And we got involved into CAD CAM quite early on. So my father really pioneered scanning really in this country as one of the first users of intraoral scanner. And that was back in the um, E4D days. And now it's a key part of everything we do. And that has led to a lot of different opportunities, which I'm very thankful for, like the Institute of Digital Dentistry, which I set up as basically an education hub for unbiased digital dentistry information. So back in January 2019, this was the first Medit scanner that we got. This was the i500 and it was actually one of the first in the country. And, uh, you know, nowadays we have all these different Medit scanners. And it's been quite an incredible journey, I believe, for Medit um, over the past four or five years. So what I really realized is that, you know, even in my practice, you can use a Medit scanner for pretty much anything. Uh, I've used a Medit scanner for same day dentistry. I've used it for a single day crown, uh, full arch impressions, digital impressions, of course, uh, just standard study models, orthodontic models, night guards, implants. And, you know, you hear this time and time again. You always see examples like this that people show on their presentations about the full digital workflow and how well it works. So this is an example of full mouth rehab I did, and it was never using impression material at all. And this is another example, and this is taken straight from the Medit software. And this was a case I completed just a few weeks ago, actually of a full mouth rehab, all scanned with a Medit i700, and all restorations were fitted. And, and really the key of today, what I really wanna get across is as many clinical tips as possible of what I do day to day in my practice. You know, how do you get these scans? Because that's really the key. And that leads us to the slide, you know, how do you take the perfect scans? 
what is an intraoral scan is probably the, the first question we need to ask ourselves to be able to answer this. And, and the reason why I bring this up is it's not like a philosophical question, is we just need to appreciate that an intraoral scanner is a camera, in, an, in essence. You know, that's the easy, simplified way to think about it. An intraoral scan is a camera. And what this camera does is it basically shoots light. Okay, so it shoots light in some form. And this light reflects off the tissues that you are trying to scan. And as you can see in this video, the light is constantly flickering on and off. And this is captured by a sensor in the intraoral scanner. Now, why this is important to understand is basically this you know, if you clearly understand this, it really makes all your scans go perfectly well because obviously if there's any saliva, if there's any debris, if there's any soft tissue in the way of this intraoral scanner, you are going to have issues with your scan. And so what the purpose of today's webinar really is to guide you on how to be able to achieve this day in, day out. So where do you start? And really, I think hopefully most of you have already got a scanner. If you are already uh, have a minute scanner, that's perfect. If you are on the fence, I, I, I give you a gentle push to get into it ASAP because digital dentistry is changing very quickly. It's a very exciting field and you just need to go out there and invest. The second thing is you need a computer. So a lot of distributors these days will sell you a computer with your scanner. And that's fine. Uh, those of you who may not be getting a computer with their scanner, the really key part of ensuring you can get good scans, and I know this may self sound self-explanatory, is just make sure that the computer specs are correct. And I can't stress this enough, guys, because I've seen and I've trained a lot of dentists that use Medit scanners. And the thing about a Medit scanner, because it relies on the user to buy the right computer hardware, you need to make sure that your computer is good enough to run the scanner. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. You know, If the hardware is working against you from the start, you are going to have so many issues with your scans. Laggy, crashing, all these problems. So from the start, you need to make sure that you meet the system requirements. And Medit is one of the only scanner companies on the entire market that is actually uh, usable with Mac. And, and from what I understand from Mac users, it's an even better user experience. So make sure you meet the user requirements. And that's all I'll talk about that because that is quite self-explanatory. So you are set up, you have the scanner, you have the computer, you are now ready to scan. What do you do? First and foremost, you need to use correct scan strategies. And I know this is a topic that's talked about you know, all the time. And I'm also aware that in the Medit software, there is smart stitching and all these AI features that allow you to, you know, get around scan strategies. But without a doubt, the reason why we have scan strategies is it improves, improves your scan speeds. It increases accuracy. And this has been literature proven that rather than haphazardly scanning around, if you use the right scan strategy, and that involves a continuous, you know, fabrication of this digital impression rather than stitching a whole lot of data together that will improve accuracy and it helps minimize errors in your scan now i have this short video playing because i don't want to go over scan strategies strategies too much because everyone's heard about it but as you can see the occlusal is scanned first and then the palatal and then the buccal or any variation of this and this basically shows how i do a scan in my office um, and so one key thing that you can see here is how I get the contact points. So you can come quite buckle and rotate the scanner to get the contact points. And you can also approach the contact points from the palatal. So I'll just play this once again for you. You start on the occlusal, go all the way to the other side, make sure you capture the incisal edges, rotate, capture all the palatal surfaces, rotate, capture all the buckle surfaces. And you want to practice this as much as possible so that you can do this in one and pass you don't want to start and stop too much and then you can see here my technique to get the occlusal context it's really important to realize i mean this is tip number one really is that when you do your scanning strategy a lot of people get really caught up in capturing every single bit of data on their first pass and that's not actually what you're supposed to do i think i recommend you scan overall you follow the strategy 
occlusal, buccal, palatal, and then you go back and fill in the areas that you need to. And typically the areas that you need to fill are around the contact areas, for example, around your preparation. Now you will see that is a full arch scan. You can also equally do a quadrant scan, and I will leave this for you and your lab to discuss. You know, I personally use a lot of quadrant scanning in my same day dentistry, but I am designing and I am milling the crowns. So I would recommend you discuss that with your lab about what they would prefer. Um, but without a doubt, quadrant scanning does work, especially for a single unit. Anything beyond, you know, three to four units or a bridge, I would be taking a full art scan regardless. And I'll just play this again. And so you do your occlusal scan, you rotate, do your palatal scan, rotate, get your buccal scan, and notice how I go back and I tilt the scanner to get these interproximal contact areas. And you can also approach it from the buccal as I showed you, because in a patient's mouth, you, you can't always lift the scanner up like that because obviously <laughs> their mandible is in the way or their maxilla is in the way. So oftentimes I, I go 90 degrees basically from the side of the cheek and I rotate that way. The other thing to realize and be comfortable with, guys, is rotation of your hand when holding the scanner. That's a really, really key skill to learn because I find too many people are not comfortable, you know, rotating from the buckle and the palatal in a smooth motion. The last thing that you will notice is that how fast this is, and this is the reality of intraoral scanning and how many benefits it provides for you, in that you really can move this fast to take a scan. The other thing I notice a lot of dentists doing is that they're moving too slow. And again, practice makes perfect. Practice as much as you can, and that's how you're going to master the skill. So now you need to do a bite scan. Now the bite scan is an interesting thing because a lot of users struggle with this. And I know Medit has invested a lot of time and money into their AI, and they've even released an occlusion app just to help users with this. So the bite scan is very straightforward. You get the patient to bite down, and you really need to check this part, guys. Especially, I mean, for single units, it's very simple. My recommendation, how you take a bite scan, there's two methods. You either tell the patient to open, move the patient into, sorry, move the scanner into the patient's cheek, and then tell them to bite down, and then start the scan and take your bite registration. I don't really like that technique much because I feel like it's quite hard for the patient to bite naturally when a scanner is in their cheek. So what I prefer to do, tell the patient to bite down. And if they're numb, you need to be aware that also makes it quite tricky. So the, the words I like to tell the patient is make sure you're biting very hard on your back teeth. Bite on your back teeth very hard. They bite down. I retract the cheek with my fingers or a mirror. I check that they're biting properly. And then I will move the scanner into position. Note, the scanner is not turned on. I never turn on the scanner, meaning start scanning outside the mouth. I always move it into position and then start the scanning process. And where you want to start is typically, you know, somewhere around the molars. It's not really that, you know, you don't have to overthink this too much, guys. So start somewhere around the distal molars and you want the scanner to be 90 degrees to the occlusal plane, facing the occlusal plane directly. And then you basically in a zigzag motion up and down, capture data of the top arch and the bottom arch. And the medit is very good at showing you when that has been captured and that it has aligned the two scans. So then the question becomes, what can go wrong? Because a lot of people have issues with bites and with scanning. And frankly, guys, I mean, there's been a lot of literature on the accuracy of intraoral scanners, and it's been well established both anecdotally by clinicians using them every day, but also by the literature that the most significant factor causing inaccurate scans is operator error. You know, I hate to say this because we like to blame the technology or the software, but a lot of the time it is the operator. You need to actually analyze your scans. You need to take the scan correctly. You need to make sure the patient's biting correctly. Now, common things that can happen with an incorrect bite scan is something like this, where, you know, the patient is just not biting correctly at all. Now, this may be okay if it was like a leaf gauge or something like for a sleep appliance, but for this, if this was for a crown, this would be a big no-no. The more common things that users are seeing is stuff like this. So you can actually rotate your scans and look through them. 
Now, if you see a few contact areas where the, there is some show through of one arch through the other, that's okay. Like on the left-hand side here, if I get my laser pointer over here on the left-hand side, this is generally okay. But where there's a lot of show through like here, you have a few options. You can either take another byte scan, so you would delete that byte scan and then redo it and then check this area again. Or if you're finding this is happening to you a lot, what I usually recommend is take a byte scan on both sides, obviously. And you can also analyze this with the new occlusion analysis application by Medit. So a lot of these byte issues, if you look at it, what I would recommend is you just repeat the byte scan and you should see some improvement in this aspect. And if that's still not working, you would do bilateral bytes. So you would do a byte scan on one side and a byte scan on, on the other. And try to give the scan as much data as possible to be able to align this properly. And this is another example of too much show through. Uh, you can see one arch is showing through the other here and here where the laser pointer is. And once again, just keep an eye on this. The, the key thing is, is that just like we were trained in dental school, when we take an impression, we pull out the impression and then we analyze it before we send it to the lab. The same thing applies to scans, my friends. So a lot of the time, I don't know why dentists don't analyze their scans. So you need to, after you've taken your scan, you need to look, you need to check it, make sure it's accurate, make sure it's correct. The lab will pick up a lot of the slack, but this is why labs complain a lot of the time about dentist scanning. It's because of issues like this. So always just keep mindful of that, rotate the scanner and look where you're scanning and look at the byte uh, registration, check that there's not too much show through.